Welcome, A's Sun fans. I'm Jordan Griffith, and we are here to commemorate the 50th anniversary of Title IX. And who else to do it better than the legendary doctor, Coach Dot Richardson? Coach, I appreciate your time today. Thanks, Jordan, for having me. I suppose we keep our first question there. Dr. Dot Richardson, do you go by Dot, Coach? There's so many titles to call you. What, what are you usually called in your everyday life? Uh, usually just Dot, you know, but I hear it all. Could be Coach, Coach Dot, Dr. Dot, Dot com, or my family calls me Dorothy. <laughs> Why does your family call you Dorothy? Is that, is that your name? Your That's actual my name is Dorothy? Name. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so when you and hear that, you know, it's family. Exactly. Yeah, my husband... He'll call me when he calls you Dorothy. I know it's serious conversation. Just kidding. Well, to give the fans a little bit of a background, you received your MD from Louisville, which is actually where you're calling from right now. You guys played them, got the win last night. Back in 1993, you were clearly a star athlete winning a gold medal. And we'll get to that, obviously. But I want to talk about the education side of things. For you as a coach, how important is it to – to help groom not just talented athletes of these women, but also just good character people to send out into the world once they're done at Liberty? Well, it's the most important thing. You know, for me, it's making sure that I am showing Christ right within me and to our players that they realize who they really are um, as an individual defined by, and, and I believe, you know, Jesus Christ and uh, the other thing is in the student athlete environment to take student extremely serious. And I am a doctor. Um, I take that very serious when some of my, you know, athletes are wanting to be nurses and take that. Absolutely. We will work around it because they might work miss practices, but the most important thing is what career they're going to have, you know, what education right. are they getting? And when you look at title nine through the years, uh, you know, there's been an opportunity that a lot of Girls and women were denied the opportunity to be able to get a great education, but also, um, you know, participate in athletics. I remember it was about 10th grade and I was in an anatomy class. And one of the girls that was at my uh, table, uh, she said, you know, I think I'm gonna be a doctor. And I was like, can, can girls be doctors? Can you believe even saying that now today? Uh, so it's, it's awesome to see where we've come and we've come together as men and women, you know, to recognize the gifts that God has given each and every one of us, no matter what gender, no matter what race, right. That we all are special in our own rights and can make a contribution to society. And it's just been a, a blessing to see that evolution of women in sport, but also, uh, in education as well. You kind of mentioned about how the times have changed with Title IX. How do you think Title IX specifically has affected positive change in college athletics? Well, the first thing it really hit me is, isn't it a shame that we have to have an amendment to the Constitution that basically says that everyone should have the same opportunities, right? Um, but grateful that it is there uh, as a constant reminder. The thing is that we never want to get to a society where you really forget the past right? It's something that as we learn from the past, we don't have to erase the past, right? We have to make sure that we don't repeat the bad of the past. And that's what I see with Title IX. It's, um, it's something that had to be forced, if you would, to open the eyes of everybody to say, yeah, um, it really is kind of silly we have to have this amendment. Um, but to get federal funding, you have to be able to treat everyone no matter what gender, right? Um, no matter what race, um, you know, equally. And the thing is that, you know, life isn't always fair. We know that. Uh, but to have an opportunity to pursue fairness it was what we all want, right? I hate hearing, well, we don't have men's wrestling because of Title IX, right? Or we don't have this, this male sport of gymnastics because of Title IX. No, if you look at it, Everyone has a choice of whether or not they're going to fund what programs. And if money, if they want more money to be going to football or those decisions, that's not a blame on Title IX. Um, and so I hope that that, uh, you know, is something that is not used as a crutch or an excuse, right? But I can tell you one of the greatest moments in my life was after we won 
the Olympic gold medal for the first time in history that our sport of softball in 1996 had the opportunity. We seized it. We won a gold medal for the United States of America. And the most amazing moment was there overlooking in the stands, trying to get onto the field, but there were security guards all around the field were a boy and a girl, both reaching over the barrier, trying to have a moment in sharing that Olympic uh, gold medal with us, a boy and a girl. And it hit me that we have come to a point where it's really not about gender, it's about appreciating the gifts, athletic gifts that an athlete has no matter what gender, and to be able to share in that moment together, both boys and girls and men and women, us as society. You already mentioned the gold medal that you won back in 96. I do want to talk about your amazing career as well. You're calling me from Louisville, but here in Atlanta, where I'm calling you from, you've made quite a few memories back in 96. You not only played, not only played well, not only won, but you hit the game-winning home run in the gold medal game. I know you probably get this question quite a bit, but I would love to hear it just as a fan as well. What was that experience like? And after that game, how did your life change? Well, it inspired me to write a book called Living the Dream. Yep. When I was seven years old, I saw the Olympics for the first time in my life on TV. And I saw a pole vaulter go over a bar. And when he landed, the momentum brought him up from the mat, right? And he looked up and he saw that the pole had remained, it hadn't fallen. And he had captured the Olympic gold medal and his arms went up in the air and the cameras were scanning everyone in the stadium. And they were chanting USA. USA. And that night I went to bed and had a dream that I was standing on a podium and I bent down and an Olympic gold medal was put around my neck. Jordan, 20, what was that? 27 years later from that dream, there we all were on the gold medal podium in the first Olympic ever for our sport in Atlanta in 1996. And when I bent down, and that gold medal was put around my neck. When I stood up, I knew that I was living that dream I had as a seven-year-old girl. 27 years later, in all the times I've played for the United States, five Pan American Games, five uh, World Championships, every time a gold medal was put around my neck, I wondered, as grateful of, as I was, but I wondered. I thought the dream was the Olympic gold medal. So imagine in 1996, when I bent over and that Olympic gold medal was put right around my neck, I was living the dream. And I tell you, 27 years, people could say it's never going to happen. You chose the wrong sport. I played volleyball, basketball, softball, track and field and tennis in high school. And every other sport was an Olympic sport, but softball. But God has perfect timing because in 1996, there we were on the gold medal podium, living our dreams and opening the door of opportunities, Title IX conversation, opening the doors of opportunities for every young girl to dream as big as we did for Olympic gold. That's, that's amazing stuff. That, that's absolutely amazing. I was going to mention the book. You already brought it up. Authoring a book and being published and having such a story like yourself what was that like for you writing that book? Is that something that's maybe a little easier because it's your own story? Or was that some, somewhat difficult to you? Well, it was difficult in that as somebody else wrote it, they just interviewed me. So when I got the final copy, I was like, wait a minute, this is not, you know, exciting. I'm like, okay, wait. So I was able to be able to try and brush it up a little bit. Um, and I didn't get, wasn't able to get to a, a one chapter, but I was able to make it a little bit of my own. Um, I wrote another, okay. another book called um, Go For It, a conversation about being you. Um, and that was pretty much all me on that one. Uh, but what I loved about it was under, you know, just being able to share, um, to share the side of a young girl who is given gifts from the Lord in athletics, but was told by society, too bad. Unfortunately, you were born a girl and good at sports. Too bad you weren't born a boy, right? Society made it perfectly clear that girls should not be athletic because we were not allowed to play any organized sports. Only boys were. And so now 
I just was like, Lord, why did you give me this talent with no opportunities? And Jordan, I look back now and I kind of like smile because those are words of a child. I didn't know what the future would hold. And guess what? One day I was asked to play on a little league baseball team when a coach saw me throwing a fastball, pitching to my brother to break in his brand new catcher mitt before his game. And he said, how would you like to play on my little league baseball team? And this was my answer to prayer, right? I get to play baseball. But the coach said, well, we're going to have to cut your hair really short and give you a boy's name. We're going to call you Bob. In order for me to play a sport that I love and was pretty good at, I would have disguised myself as a boy. And I looked at him and I said, sir, thank you, but no, thank you. If I had to hide who I am, I just don't feel it's right. So I walked over to another field. I found a friend of mine, Sunday Brown. She said, hey, let's play catch. And it was only baseball catch. That's all that we knew. And this other coach comes running up to me and says, wow, you got a great arm. Do you have a minute to talk to the head coach? And I was like, sure. And Jordan, I was thinking deja vu. How could this be happening within 30 minutes of each other, right? And this other coach, though, wasn't a man. It was a woman. And it wasn't softball. It wasn't baseball. It was softball. And I never heard of it. Mm. And the coach said, well, get on the infield. Take a few ground balls. And I felt like I belonged. And when she called me over and asked if I would play on her fast pitch softball team, the next, I said, yes. And then the next question was, how old are you? And when I told her I was 10 years old, she almost died. The average age was 22 of that team. So the sport of softball for me started at a competitive level at 10 years of age on a women's team where the average age is 22. And this is why we, you have me on the show, because check this out. Sunday Brown, the friend of mine who we played baseball catch, where a softball coach discovered me, the yeah. next year when Title IX came into effect in our neighborhood, Sunday Brown became the first girl ever to play baseball, Little League baseball, in our hometown of Union Park, Florida. I had already gotten into softball. And that, as you know, took me through my career. Scholarships were then offered, you know, and I was able to get a scholarship to play in college. And Sunday Brown pursued as far as she could for baseball. Um, but unfortunately, in high school, it wasn't received very well, a girl playing high school baseball. Um, but softball had already opened the door for me. A, a lot to unpack right there. That's a tremendous story. and I, I appreciate you sharing that. My first question in that situation, how proud are you of yourself looking back on it that you didn't compromise your principles and you were rewarded for it 30 minutes later? I tell you what, I really don't know how I said no, because I wanted to play baseball so badly. Yeah. I mean, I imagine myself when I'm pitching to my big brother to break in his brand new catcher, Smith, I imagine myself as a major league baseball pitcher. I'm like, I, I saw it. And you know how the Lord rewarded me? In 1996, after the Olympics, I was invited by the Atlanta Braves at the World Series versus the Yankees to throw out the first pitch. And when I was there with 60,000 people, right, in Turner Stadium, and I was there, and I, I reared back and I threw that fastball, I was living that little dream of being a major league baseball pitcher in my mind. But, you know, the biggest lesson is, Jordan, we don't have to hide who we are. God has made us for a purpose. And that's what Title IX is about, is that we're all unique. We all have been given gifts. Jordan, you have more gifts than I do in regards to doing your show and what you do and reaching the people that you are. And that is powerful. But we're all powerful. Because each of us are unique and have a gift and it's all needed, no matter what it is, whether you're in front of a camera, right, or behind the camera. So that's Title IX to me. Title IX is about each of us being given an opportunity to express the gifts that God has given us and to do it freely and with acceptance. Coach, well, I'll say you're far too humble. I appreciate you saying that. Uh, another question I have, can you tell me more about the Dot Richardson Softball Association?
I have a not-for-profit that association is really about um, empowering young girls to dream big. And through the sport of softball, um, just supporting you know, them. And I think sports is a great avenue. It's a great avenue for boys and girls to be able to recognize their skills socially, um, individually to set goals and to work hard, have discipline. We can go on and on of what sports provides. Um, but for me, through my not-for-profit, that's one of the big things we do is provide opportunity. That's, that's amazing. Coach, I only have a couple more questions for you. I don't want to, I don't want to keep you too long, but again, keeping it on the subject of Title IX, what do you think it, it does to the future generation being able to see women like yourselves and these women in these author, authoritative roles kind of play a big role in their lives as they grow up? Well, the nice thing is a lot of young girls and boys don't really know about Title IX. And isn't that nice that we don't have to look at it, you know, and Absolutely. think about it, really. Um, but there's still discrepancies that you see. You know, I'm, I'm just going to put it out there for discussion. I hope people enjoy this. But I always looked at when you look at college sports, we don't need to, you know, we have no female sport right now that has the numbers of football. But yet we include football into the Title IX configuration of funding. You know what I mean? Um, I just... I don't know why we can't put a little asterisk saying once when there is a female sport that has 125, you know, participants in it for 85 scholarships. Um, you know, when that happens, then it happens. But I think in being fair about a lot of things, you also have to be smart, right? So, you know, if you look at funding, I, I think all athletics should be headcount sports. You know, if you're going to be a student athlete, why do you have equivalent sports? Well, you talk about revenue, but we're all a team. When you're in a college, it's all a team, right? So money, whether it's generated from football, basketball, baseball, whatever, it's all a team. We're all in it together. You know, that's, that's important. But I think the big thing is for Title IX is it's now moving into a lot of other areas besides just opportunities to participate in sports, right? It's about treating people with respect and making sure that that has a focus. And that is extremely important. Um, but my whole thing is we all need to love God and love each other, right? It's really about respecting each other. We may not agree. Um, we may not always agree. We may not, uh, you know, whether it's lifestyles or whether it's decisions or opinions. Um, but the point is that we all are in this together. So we should love each other, um, you know, and that's the biggest thing. And uh, um, I hope that's a big takeaway that we're all in this together and let's do it the right way. Coach, my last question for you. Here in a few years, who's going to get the movie rights to your life? Is that going to be Quentin Tarantino or Steven Spielberg? <laughs> I don't know. Um, there is a couple scripts that have been written. My concern, just like the book that you brought up, is the movie script is not like, I think you can just take it, the, the actual reality is a movie. We don't have to throw in Hollywood things. You know, that's what I don't like. And so I haven't given the rights away. Um, I just want it straight up how it is, you know, and how it is, is, you know, going through this 50 years, you've talked about this evolution of women in sports through the eyes of a young girl who became a woman with opportunities that she, she seized to become an orthopedic surgeon, to become, you know, the humility of playing for her country uh, in the highest level in the Olympic games. Uh, you know, that's really what it's about is a movie about living your dream, no matter what it might be uh, to dream big. So you're telling me there have already been scripts made up for an actual right. movie about you. Yes. That's just, that's perfect. Of course there is. That's, that, that's amazing. That's amazing. But how they want to change it all. And it's like, let's just go the real deal to me. Hopefully that's inspiring enough. Well, I'm inspired. And I know millions of other people would be if that movie would be made, let alone just knowing your career path and everything you've done for the sport. Coach, thank you so much for your time today. I could talk to you for five hours, so we're going to have to cut it at some point. So I appreciate your time. I've learned so much. It's your true inspiration. I appreciate it. Well, Jordan, I appreciate you and everyone just thinking about me to be a part of this because it is a, a, a major topic that I think people should just look and realize that, wow, um, society we're coming together right and all of us just uh, appreciate the gifts that we've all been given coach thank you so much 
You too. God bless you.